there, I'm Kina, and this month Stumbox is exploring the holiday hodgepodge box we sent you. This video will explore how to make poinsettia pH paper, a litmus test at home that you can use to explore the different pH balances of your chemicals at home. You should do this experiment with a parent, so make sure you have someone with you before you get started. Okay! What you'll need today to get started for our poinsettia pH paper included in your box is the filter paper and your safety gear. Everything else you can find at home. For us, that means a poinsettia. You can find these at your grocery store and you might even have one around the house for the holidays. You need a spoon, an adult to help you boil the water for this experiment. You definitely want a strainer and something flat that you can put your filter paper in when you're ready. And lastly, of course, our scissors. First things first, safety gear. And now we're ready to start experimenting. Grab your poinsettia and pluck some red bracts from these. These are not flowers, and also contrary to popular belief, poinsettia are not poisonous, so you're good to go. I have already plucked some. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop these up into very fine pieces. Just go nuts. You want to cut up your poinsettia leaves into something that looks like a fine tea. When you've had tea and it's loose leaf, it should look like this. And we're going to dump it into our pot. Side note, just because poinsettia is not toxic does not mean you should eat it. It's not good for you, it's not good for your pet, but it's not poisonous, so don't eat it. Keep it away from them. I've added just enough water to cover the bottom of my pot. It's about one to two inches deep. Um, and we're just going to stir it on high for a while. You can also microwave this. Our poinsettia has been boiling for about five minutes now, so we're going to go ahead and turn it off. Take the spoon out, and with a parent's help, you should have them do this part because it's pretty dangerous. We're going to put a strainer over our bowl. We're just going to pour all of our mixture in. Now you can push through any remaining color, and I'm going to grab some of my filter paper. You can use as many as you want. I think one to two should be enough because um, you can cut these into strips. And you're going to go ahead and soak it. Now have a parent help you with this part because this water is hot. When enough time has passed that the water is cool enough to reach in or use a spoon, spoon out your filter paper. The more poinsettia leaves you add and the less water, the darker the mixture will look and the more potent the reaction will be. So I'm going to let these sit out to dry right here. Um, it may take an hour or two, but just let them sit. Don't use them yet. And when they're dry, you're ready for the next step. Once your papers are dry, it's time to cut them up into strips for testing. So you can cut them up into however many pieces you want. I'm probably going to cut mine into however many cups I have here. You can use your pipette for this part or you can dip the paper straight into the solution. I am going to use my pipette. I'm going to start with water, which has a pH of 7. And when you move down the line, you'll notice that the color of the paper will change based on the pH of whatever solution we're using. Lime juice pH of 2. Hydrogen peroxide, a pH of anything from 1 to 5. Vinegar, pH of 2.4. Milk, pH of 6.5. Water, pH of 7. Borax solution, pH of 9. Bleach, pH of 12. And I'm cleaning my pipette out with the water I used first in between so that I'm not messing up the pH of whatever I'm using. How does this work? Why are these changing colors? Well, poinsettia has something in it called anthocyanin. That's a chemical that gives the leaves its red colors. But when anthocyanin is exposed to different pH levels, the shape of the molecule changes and reflects different colors of light, making it a great pH indicator. So what we've done is we've made our own litmus strip, which is something scientists use to test chemicals for their pH. We went through this line earlier and we told you what the pH of each one of these solutions was. So when anthocyanin is exposed to anything less than a pH of 3, it turns bright red or pink. So we can see that our lemon juice and our vinegar has a pH less than 3. If it's exposed to anything in the range of 3 to 4, the color is negative. It's nothing. There's not a lot of color. So I think it's safe to say that our hydrogen peroxide was somewhere between 3 and 4. Anything that is 4 to 7 comes out with a pH that's slightly blue in color. So the milk you can faintly see it has turned this color into a blue. When you move to a pH of 7, you start to see more blue-green colors, and the water, mm, I wouldn't really say that's blue-green. It's kind of like the milk where it's hard to tell. 
but we definitely start to see change when we make it to our borax. So our borax, we had quoted around nine for a pH, and anything greater than a pH of eight turns into a yellow-green when we expose the poinsettia and anthocyanin to it. So our borax turned it to a weird browny, yellow-green color, while the bleach, which has a pH of 12, definitely made an impact that turned it green, yellow, and because of the nature of bleach, bleached some of the color out. And there you have it. So tell us what you've tried at home. Send us your pictures of your anthocyanin paper or your poinsettia pH paper. And I can't wait to hear from you guys and see what you come up with. Stay tuned for next month. We can't wait to see you then. Bye, this has been Kina with Gumbot.